Hey everyone, my name is Suraj Rampore and I am a new teaching faculty member in computer science and engineering here at the University of Michigan. And in this video, I wanted to show you some of the cool things you're going to get to work on if you take practical data science. Now, this video is not going to be a substitute for reading the course website, practicaldsc.org. There you'll be able to read more about prerequisites and the specific topics we plan on covering. Instead, my goal here is just to show you cool things to get you interested in the course. Now, at the start of the course, we're going to learn how to use pandas, which is a package in Python for working with tabular data, that is data in tables. And don't worry if you don't already know Python, we will introduce that as well. And so here's an example table or data frame in pandas. This one involves loans that were approved by some lending company and each row corresponds to a different person's loan. So like this person was loaned $18,000 on June 1st, 2014, and their interest rate was 16.99% and their loan was for five years and uh, they live in Minnesota. And so we will learn how to take data sets like these uh, and answer questions like, which state had the highest average loan amount? And we will spend lots of time learning how to answer those questions, but soon we're gonna task ourselves with problems that can't be easily answered by looking at a bunch of numbers on a page, and so we will turn to the power of visualization. So we'll be able to create visualizations like this one, which shows us that if you want a lower interest rate, well then you should aim for a higher credit score and also prefer three-year loans over five-year loans. We will also learn how to pull data from the internet using code. So for example, if I go to mgoblue.com and look at this year's football schedule, I might say, hey, it would be nice if I could load this year's schedule into Python so I could perform my own analysis and decide on which games I want to go to. It turns out I can do that. And just by calling this function that I created, I can get back a table of all of this year's games. And I can ask questions like, hey, which of our games this year are not in Ann Arbor? And it seems like this year our away games are at UW, Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio State. Along those lines of working with text data, we will learn about this idea called TFIDF, which allows us to find the most important summary words in a set of documents. And so, for example, here I have the transcripts of every presidential State of the Union address from 1790 through 2023. You can see all of the text here. And when we use this idea of TFIDF on every single one of these State of the Union addresses, we see we get back the five most important words per speech. And so you can see back in the 1790s, the most important words they were talking about were like British and Spain and treaties and vessels and, you know, more British. Uh, I don't think, you know, government officials use words like those today. These days, they're more talking about things like jobs and Americans and down, probably talking about unemployment and, you know, children and health and stuff like that. It works pretty well, and we will learn how to do this ourselves. After we learn how to wrangle with messy data, we will switch our focus to prediction and machine learning. And the first type of machine learning problem we will work on is regression problems, where we predict some sort of real number, in this case, the tip we will receive given some sort of other variables or features. In this case, I'm trying to predict how much I should receive in tips if I'm a waiter, given how much the, re uh, the table spends at the restaurant, their total bill. And so we will learn exactly where to draw a regression line like this one and why we chose to draw that line over any of the other infinitely many lines we could have drawn. We will also learn about this idea called gradient descent, which relates to finding the best intercept and slope of the regression line. And it turns out that that problem of finding the best intercept and slope is equivalent to finding the point on this 3D graph that is at the very bottom. That is the point that minimizes this graph. And it turns out that gradient descent is the backbone that underpins most of modern machine learning today, including things like neural networks and transformers. If you've heard of those things, don't worry if not. They all involve gradient descent in some way, and we will gain a deep understanding of how that works in practical data science. We will also learn how to use multiple input variables for the purposes of making predictions. So for example, here, I'm using not just the total amount that people spent at the restaurant or you know at their table, uh, but also the number of people at the table uh, as a input variable when predicting how much I'm going to get in tips. And since we have two input variables, we now need to visualize our predictions in three dimensions. And our predictions now lie on a plane or like a piece of paper rather than a straight line. We will also talk about the problem of model generalization. Think about it like this. If you have an, an upcoming final exam, let's say, 
What's the right way to study? Well, you probably want to do a little bit of looking at past exams and trying to, you know, understand concepts from there, but you're also probably going to want to review lectures and assignments to make sure you really understand the concepts. If what you do is memorize the answers to every single practice exam question, well, then that's not necessarily going to translate well to the real exam because you will have overfit to the practice exam. And it turns out that that's a problem that machine learning practitioners face all the time. So for example, if I try and fit a line or degree one polynomial, a cubic or degree three polynomial, and a degree 25 polynomial to a data set, it may seem like on first glance, the degree 25 polynomial is the one that's making the best predictions, but it turns out when we change the data set ever so slightly, it's not the degree 25 polynomial that's the best, but it's the cubic or degree three one. And so we will learn how to balance this trade-off. It involves this thing called the bias variance trade-off and related ideas like cross-validation. And it's a very practical concept that you will get your hands dirty with in this course. Towards the end, we will look at another type of prediction problem that is classification. So in the regression examples we've looked at, we've been trying to predict some sort of real number, like how much am I going to earn in tips? But classification deals itself with predicting one of finitely many labels, like yes or no, or this picture is of a dog, cat, or hamster. Here's an example classification technique called a decision tree, which is trying to classify whether or not we think someone has diabetes. And the way that a decision tree works is that it asks you a series of yes or no questions until it comes to a classification. So for example, to predict whether or not you have diabetes, first it asks, hey, is your blood glucose level less than or equal to 129.5? If it is, well, then you move to this subtree. And if it's not, well, then you move to this subtree. And so if my blood glucose level was above 129.5, well, then it would ask me this question. And then if I said yes to this question, I would predict no diabetes. And if I said no, well, then I would predict yes, diabetes. And so a question is, how does it decide which questions to ask? Well, we're gonna peek under the hood and figure out how decision trees really work and then use them for real world classification problems. So if any of that sounds interesting to you and you wanna apply these sorts of skills, to your own projects, well, then I think you're really going to enjoy this class. Before we wrap up, I want to pass the mic over to one of my current students here at UCSD, Jack Detterman, who took a similar class with me here at UCSD. Hey everyone, I'm Jack. I'm an undergraduate here at the University of California, San Diego, and I have previously taken the version of practical data science that is offered here at UCSD and is also taught by Surich. And I'm just going to briefly talk to you all about a concept that I learned during the class that I not only found really, really interesting, but has since been a really valuable tool in the work that I do outside of class. And that is the communication of information through a choropleth or a heat map. Now, before taking this class, while I knew that a heat map was a very intuitive visualization to interpret, I would have had absolutely no idea how to build one from scratch, let alone on a data set that I was fully responsible for extracting the information from. But since my enrollment, I have not only been able to write all of this fantastic code to extract all of the information I need from a cool data set, I'm also able to package it really nicely in this gorgeous visualization that shows the distribution of power outages between the states for each year in my data set. And beyond that, I was able to embed this visualization in a public facing website. And that is just so, so cool to me. I've always really loved the communication of information visually. And so to be able to have this final product is something that I'm really, really proud of and definitely would not have been possible without practical data science. So I really hope you guys all enjoy the class as much as I did. I really hope to see you there in the fall and go blue. Cool, thanks Jack and thanks everyone for watching. As a reminder, make sure to check out the course website, practicaldsc.org. And my email is there if you have any questions about the course. I hope to see you in class in the fall.